Good afternoon. This video I deal with Jack Smack and his video against me, Jack Smack seventy seven, and uh, uh, he talks about his little issue about the uh, costless gospel. I never accused uh, Arnold of teaching the costless gospel, and I still have Arnold, by the way, as one of my channels. He talks about me obsessively, neurotically, compulsively exposing losers. Like brain the stone, I don't know what this idea is making and we tie break or making up names for people uh, to the point of vexatious uh, super rogation. Rogation. He likes to use big, big words. I guess it makes him think he's intelligent. He gets guys all going over. Always goes after people. And he tells every, everyone he goes after they're lost. Now, so, but recently, uh, Dead Ward, PF123, has weaken, wickedly defamed myself. Defamed myself, Wilkin and Hodges claim we preach a crossless gospel. You do preach a crossless gospel. Now, the gospel they put up, and that's an interesting thing, because really, when he puts up a guy, uh, 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 he doesn't have, he, he'll put up the true gospel. And then, but he'll still say all you need to believe is in John six forty seven. If you think the only thing John, you only can say by John three sixteen or John three six forty seven, that's that's not that's not enough. Here's what he, he'll have down here. This is what you got to believe to be saved. This doctrine is true. Page ninety three of his book. But only those who have already put their faith on Christ alone, they've trusted what Jesus Christ has already done to them for them on Calvary, namely He died on the cross. For their sins, was buried and rose again, making full atonement for past, sins past, present, and future, which permanently secures the salvation of those who simply believe on him. Which lines of Ephesians 1 12 and 13. Now, putting your faith alone in Jesus Christ, trusting what Jesus Christ did for you on the cross, on Calvary, died for your sins for your sins for the cross, past, present, and future, and made a full atonement. And of course, he hasn't had any here, but Wolves are dead. Uh, you see, here's the wolves are dead from here. Okay, he doesn't have the resurrection here. But the fact is, is that that would be a legitimate gospel. Wilkin and, and Hodge don't teach that. They teach that as doctrinal issues that you can learn after you believe the promise of, a promise of John 6, 47. And John, and John 3, 16 can't save you. By itself, it can't save. It's a promise that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You got to believe in him about something. You got to believe what he did. In other words, you got to be in the cross. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten Son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay. But you got to believe in what he did for you on the cross. It just, that's a promise that if you do believe in him, you'll be saved. But you got to believe what he did for you on the cross. That's what Ephesians 1, 12 and 13 is talking about. So he's really bugged about the cross, this gospel issue. And that's not bad enough. Uh, Deadwood has been slandering Ralph Yankee and Arnold. Not been slandering. Slander's lying about somebody. See how these guys are called slander? You're slandering. You slander anybody. Ralph Yankee Arnold, who's not a crossless gospel guy, was teaching something. He said the gospel, the, uh, the eternal security is the gospel. Claim that eternal security is not the gospel, but is rather a natural call. Okay. He did teach that. He, uh, that Ralph, uh, Ralph Yankee Arnold is teaching that uh, the eternal security is the gospel. And I disagree with him on that. I'm not slandering him. I'm disagreeing with him. Slandering him would be lying about him. 
like Jack Smack is saying, I'm lying about what he teaches regarding the crossless gospel. If he thinks John 3.16 is all you need to get saved, that's a crossless gospel. If you think the only thing you need to get saved is John 6.47, that's a crossless gospel. Even though you're preaching a true gospel somewhere else. Okay, the problem with, it, with that is that if someone doesn't believe in eternal security or doesn't grasp eternal security, as said corollary, then they believe in another gospel. No, it isn't. That's the point. That's the point. They can get saved and get deceived into heresy. And another Jesus, Galatians uh, 1, 8, 9, and uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 1, 11, 4. The problem with this is that if someone doesn't believe in eternal security or doesn't grasp eternal security as said corollary, then they believe in another gospel. No, it's not. That's the issue of heresy. There are many people that the true gospel and then get fouled up with eternal security. Conclusion. Ed is implying that someone who believes in sal sal salivic loss is in fact saved. What I'm implying is that he could be saved. What Jack Smack is saying is that they can't be saved. See how they twist things, people? I'm not saying they are saved. I'm saying they could be saved. Jack Smack is saying that they could be saved. They, they, they can't be saved. That's the difference. He says that they don't believe in eternal security, they can't be saved. I'm saying, no, they could have been saved, they could have been saved with the true gospel, but fouled up on eternal security. The blasphemy, utter blasphemy. Edward needs to particularly apologize to Ralph Anchiano for appropriate tradition. <laughs> Because all the ways a billion times more sound than the gospel in the head. Not in this he isn't. Not in this he isn't. <laughs> and I tell you what, he's not a crossless gospel guy. Uh, that's for true. Here we go. Now, now comes a personal attack. And all these guys have personal attacks, people. They can't get away from personal attacks. But everyone knows Ed is too narcissistic and prideful to apologize. Notice that. They can't leave. And in his last video... You call me a prick. They can't get away from it. They can't deal with Christian disagreements in a charitable way. Anyways, out of sheer magnanimity, See how kind he is now? And for all Edwards Minus fans, I decided to give him the last contrived, punctuary, uh, stupid words. In other words, he was not, he wasn't making another video on, on me after this. That's that's just what he's saying. So I'm not going to deal with that anymore. Because <laughs> oh, you know, can't deal with it. So now it's the attack me. He attacks anybody who agrees with me. And there's a whole fragment, a whole section of free grace believers who broke off, broke away from Hart, Wilkin and Hodges over this. A whole division over this. So, let me read you what he says here on oh, his website. Uh, on uh, salvation. So, his view is, which I also invert my view, says, he believes, Ed believes that someone who doesn't believe in eternal security is saved. Well, the opposite, the fact is that what Arnold is saying, and I said, my view is they could be saved. What Arnold and Jack Smack of 77 are saying is they can't be saved. I didn't say they were saved. 
I said they could be saved because they fell into heresy. And the fact is, that's not part of the gospel. So they can believe the true gospel, get saved, and then get fouled up in eternal security. They say, no, if you get fouled up in eternal security, you must not have really believed the true gospel. See, they twisted the people. But let me go here uh, to uh, his website. Here's uh, how to simply be saved. How to be simply saved. The bad news, we are sinners. We deserve to be punished in hell for our sins. The good news, Jesus Christ, who is God's Son. Now, not so much information he's got to give you here to be saved, people. He just can't give you John 6, 47 or John 3, 16. That's what these guys want to tell you. Oh, he only needs John 3, 16 or John 6, 47. Now he's got four points here. The good news, Jesus Christ was God's son, died on the cross for the sins, your, your sins. He was buried, rose again, again to give you eternal life. There's a resurrection in heaven as a free gift. True. First Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Romans 6, 23. Show me where eternal security is mentioned there. How am I saved? Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Faith alone in Christ alone. There you go. Now, once you get to point three, people, are you saved or not? Are you saved or not? Once you believe two, which is, this is Ephesians 1, 12, and 13, people. This is Ephesians 1, 12, and 13. Jesus Christ was God's Son, died on the cross for your sins, who was buried in uh, uh, woes again and gave you eternal, uh, to give you eternal life in heaven as a free gift. How am I saved? Believe only Jesus Christ, not shall be, uh, uh, shall be saved, faith alone in Christ alone. Now we get to point four. Once saved, always saved. Jesus said in John 6, 47, Very, very say unto thee, he that believe in me have everlasting life. Well, that's a promise. But you're talking to a saved person already. You talk to a saved person already. Telling them that now they, they're going to have everlasting life. You get eternal life in heaven as a free gift. Well, everybody knows if you go to heaven, you have to have eternal life. But not sure if it's permanent or not. But now, point four is talking to a saved person already. Point four is talking to a saved person already. Logically speaking. By the time you get to point four, you, if you believe points two and three, you're saved. You don't get to point four. Uh, point four. And he's teaching a forceless gospel. These guys, of course, this gospel, these guys always want to jump up and down there. They're teaching a forceless gospel, you know. There's no course in John, you know, basically, not talking about death, but resurrection. He talks about the Father giving the Son. Who, God so loved the world that gave his only begotten Son, whosoever believed in him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. They're making the issue of everlasting life, and they say, well, see that? But you got to believe in what he did. On the cross. That's Ephesians 1, 12 and 13 says. And 1 Corinthians 3 and 4. There he's talking about when Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. Was, was, was buried and rose again. These guys won't take that and think they can just shortcut it. <coughs> and say, make that a doctrinal issue. Not a gospel issue. When in fact eternal security is a doctrinal issue and not a gospel issue. So you can believe what you want, but then will notice the person who insults in there. And he likes, oh, well, he, he loves putting up, you know, me, you know, these, these big words to show how educated he is. But according to his own logic, according to his own listing there, a person would be saved before he got to point four. Well, so I'll make point four, a logical quality, a point two and three. It's something you, something you tell a person after you get saved. Now you know you got eternal life, you, you can't lose it. God can't take it away from you. Who would never, who never, he would never take it away from you. You talking to a saved person. It's not part of the gospel. It's something you learn after the gospel. So a person 
who ha- doesn't believe in internal security, could have felt heresy. Might he be still lost? Per- yeah, he might be lost. Since it's not part of the gospel, he could be, you know, got a, a false gospel and that got fouled up internal security. You know, he has no, he, you know, he, he's not saved. So he, he just has no concept of internal security. But he might be a saved person who got fouled up on internal security. These guys think if you don't believe in internal security, you can't be saved. That's the difference. We say, no, it's possible they're still saved. They just got internal security fouled up. They say these guys say if you don't if you got town security fouled up, you've never was saved in the first place. Now you decide for yourselves. How you slander Yankee Arnold? Slander would be saying something about the guy who was in trouble. And I didn't call him any names. These guys can't resist calling people names. It's in the it's it's in the DNA. And his fans, like, and he's magnanimous. So in other words, because he's not going to follow up on any more videos, he's going to stop here. He's being magnanimous. You know, he's just so he's got to walk down. And he talks about me going after some some people. This guy's always going after people. And a lot of people I go after, I don't say I don't. I never. I mean, they deal with their salvation. I never say the guys don't save. Because I don't know whether or not. These guys really take a Lordship salvation view on salvation. You realize that, people. And, but instead of looking at their works, they look at their doctrines. And say, because they got fouled up doctrines, they can't be saved. That's what he's always doing. Oh, this guy's going to burst b- 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 hell wide open because he's teaching this, he's teaching that, he's teaching that. You don't know what he's going to do. He could be a heretic, that's all. But Jack Smack's always sending people to hell. Because he's te- a guy's teaching false doctrine. The Lords of Salvation, what they do is look at your works. They look at, you know, your sin, what you're producing, you're producing works. You look, you know, you're, you're living a sinful life, blah, blah, then you can't be saved. Jack Smack looks at the false doctrine and says, well, you can't be saved. He doesn't know what John Security is, then. <laughs> well, you think only unbelievers teach false doctrine? That's his, that's his mental attitude. He's always saying, I mean, he starts saying, you know, this guy, you know, he's on the way to hell, this guy's on the way to hell, this guy, you know, you know. It's pride, poor, pure pride. But he's going to call me, you know, narcissist, narcissistic. And... He doesn't even know me. <laughs> he didn't watch my videos. He doesn't know me. I mean, what do you get? Some people are telling him that. He doesn't know anything about me. People are telling him stuff. So he isn't even at the first hand information. He isn't ever interacted with me or anything. But the fact of the matter is, if eternal security is a part of the gospel, you'd be putting that in before a person got saved. Now say, okay, you gotta believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and you gotta believe in eternal security. No one says that. Well, well, it says eternal life. But a person doesn't understand what eternal life is at that point. He just knows he's going to heaven. He doesn't understand he, he can't lose it. We learn about that later, about well, yeah, what per, the, the whole connotation of uh, eternal life is. They want to put it in there and say, well, you know, you can't permanent, you know, it's permanent, you, know, you can't. But he put that as permanent in, in that gospel setup he's got there. And point four, by the time a guy got to point four, John six forty seven, that's a promise. He say nothing, and it really it's just you know vague promise. Well, you have a, you have an everlasting life. It doesn't say anything about it. you can't lose it. it. Just says you have it, and okay. It doesn't say anything about it, and God can't. I mean, if you, if you use uh, Romans 8.38 points, I say, okay, well, you know, it's, you know, nothing can separate from the love of God. I'm going to stop here and put this up. I deal with these guys. There's a logical disagreement. This is a disagreement. They, 
but the re reality is looking at people who are involved in heresy, you cannot define and say, definitely say, because he disagrees with some issue other than the gospel, he must be lost. And internal security is, 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 a, is, is not an issue of the gospel. And Christians want the heresies all the time. A Christian forget he can, he go, can forget he's actually saved. So these guys going around, this guy's lost because he's teaching this. This guy's lost because he teaches that. This guy's lost because he's teaching that. Now, if people believe those things, like a uh, false gospel, if they don't believe in a resurrection, for instance, uh, they don't believe in that Jesus Christ died for their sins on the cross, uh, all their sins on the cross, uh, and that it was efficacious. And those things, yeah, those those things. If they teach those things, the people, and even if they believe them, one time are saved. People who believe come after that and believe them would be lost. That'd be a false gospel. That doesn't mean they're not saved. The Jews, the Jews coming in to Galatia were saved. They believed. They were teaching a false gospel. They were bringing in circumcision. But they, you know, they added something. They didn't get saved with circumcision. They, they, you know, they were only circumcised. But that, but they became believers. Then they want to go to the Gentiles and say, "Well, yeah, we add this on. You got to believe. I mean, you have to, you have to get circumcision." So astounding Paul said, so how did you start with grace and end up in the law? So they were adding on something that was corrupt in the gospel by, by saying a circumcision was part of the gospel. And trying to, you know, get these guys, getting the, getting the Galatians all fouled up with works. And, uh, but Galatians, uh, Paul was shocked by it. By deception, they were bewitched. They were bewitched. I mean, that's what that's what uh, Satan does. He says, and people get how people get involved in heresies. They get Galatians were saved, and he said, "How are we getting fouled up in this?" He never said. He never said the Galatians won't save. He says, "You'll know if by grace you, your walk will be shot if you go back into the law." Go back with the uh, if you go back in circumcision. Go back to Jewish traditions. And certainly, if they now making that part of the gospel, they would found up other people who they were trying to get saved with, with true witnessing. So let me stop and put this up. Amen. Thank you.